and the big day is tomorrow the day of the net exam for which you have been waiting and waiting and preparing and preparing for months well now is the time not to worry believe me now is the time to calm yourself with sound sleep some good music packing well before time don't forget to take your admit card an extra photo your thumb impression your water bottle of course and your transparent pen, okay? And reach the center well before time because hurry leads only to worry, right? And today is the last day of discussion of important topics for net exam tomorrow. The only topic which was left was Indian literature. So here I am bringing you 40 questions, 41 today actually, which will revolve around the questions that will come tomorrow, okay? So, can we begin with question number one? Are you ready? Here it is on your screen. Which book by Bhabani Bhattacharya is set with the Sino-Indian War as a backdrop and tackles various issues, including China's presence in Tibet, as well as the more local, social and moral elements of life? A. Shadow from Ladakh. B. A goddess named Gold. C. Steel Hawk and other stories, or D, a dream in Hawaii. Tell me. It is answer A, Shadow from Ladakh. Okay, so Shadow from Ladakh by Bhavani Bhattacharya. Backdrop is Sino Indian War. Okay, China's presence in Tibet. Okay, let's move on to question number two. Oscar Wilde wrote in his review of Dash poems. His verses show us how quick and subtle are the intellectual sympathies of the Oriental mind and suggest how close is the bond of union that may someday bind India to us by other methods than those of commerce and military strength. Identify. These lines were told by Oscar Wilde for whom? A. Eunice D'Souza. B. Manmohan Ghosh. C. Arvind Krishna Mehrotra. Or D. Rabindranath Tagore. Tell me. Well, it is option B. Manmohan Ghosh. All right. Remember, so the commentary on Ghosh was done by Oscar Wilde. Okay. Question number three. Who is the hero in Mulk Raj Anand's trilogy, Village Across Black Water, The Sword and the Sickle? Okay, so these three works in his trilogy, who is the hero of these three works, Village Across the Black Water and The Sword and the Sickle? The options are A. Kalu Singh, B. Nihal Singh, C. Kirpal Singh, or D. Lalu Singh. Option D, La Lu Singh. He is the protagonist, okay, of Mulk Raj Anand's trilogy, right? Let's move on to question number four. Staying alive, woman, ecology, and survival in India is a pioneering work in eco-criticism, eco-feminism by option A, Kamla Bhaseen, B, Toru Dutt, C, Vandana Shiva, or D, Medha Patkar. Tell me. The answer is option C, Vandana Shiva. Okay. So Vandana Shiva has written the book, Staying Alive, Woman, Ecology and Survival in India. This work is based on eco-feminism. Okay. Question number five. Which novel by Rabindranath Tagore is set in the revolutionary Bengal of 1905? A. Chokar Bali. B. Char Adhyay, C. Gora, or D. The Home and the World? Tell me. Well, the answer is option D. The Home and the World. So, this work, The Home and the World by Tagore, is set in revolutionary Bengal of 1905. This takes us to question number six. Arun Joshi's novel, The Foreigner, is inspired by A. Balachandra Rajan's Too Long in the West. B. Albert Camus' The Outsider. C. Ruskin Bond's The Last Tiger. Or D. R.K. Narayan's Malgudi Days. 
Tell me, the foreigner is inspired by which of these works? The answer is option B, Albert Camus, The Outsider. This inspired Arun Joshi to write The Foreigner. Perfect. Question number seven. Who wrote the collection of short stories Phoenix Fled, which was published in 1953? A. Anita Desai. B. Ruth Pravar Jhabwala. C. Arvind Adiga. Or D. Atya Hussain. Tell me, short stories Phoenix Fled, published in 1953, written by... Option D, Atiyah Hussain. Easy? Easy. Aage badhe, bad jate hai. Question number eight. Which of the following novels by Nayantara Sehgal deals with the tension between two states? A, plans for departure. B, storms in Chandigarh. C, mistaken identity. Or D, lesser breeds. Tell me. It is option B, Storm in Chandigarh. So Storm in Chandigarh by Nayantara Sehgal deals with the tension between two states. Okay. Question number nine. His first play, Goa, written in 1964, deals with racial discrimination as a paradigm of post-colonialism. Identify this author. Your options are A, Asif Karimboy, B. Badal Sarkar, C. Vijay Tendulkar, or D. Girish Karnad. Bataye, Goa is written by. Your answer is option A. Asif Karimboy. Okay? Oh boy. Are you ready for tomorrow? Girls as well. Of course you are. You have done your best. And just trust your instinct and do the paper. Visualize. When you are reading the paper, no, just visualize what you have learned till now. Bring all those images and then tick mark the answers. And whatever you please, if you're comfortable with paper one, do that first. If you're comfortable with paper two, do that first. It's your choice. Okay? Let's move on to question number 10. Who among the following writers brought out authoritative English renderings of the Bhagavad Gita and principal Upanishads. So basically, the English renderings of Bhagavad Gita and Upanishads were brought out by option A, Neeraj C. Chaudhary, B, Dr. S. Radhakrishnan, C. R. K. Narayan, or D. Surendranath Das Gupta. Say, the answer is option B, Dr. S. Radha Krishnan. Connect him with the English renderings of Bhagavad Gita and Upanishads, right? Question number 11. Which book by Vikram Seth is based on the whole story of John Brown, who cannot get love in life and ends up much the same way as he begins, an abandoned human being? Tell me, your options are A, an equal music, B, the golden gate, C, a suitable boy, or D, a suitable girl. <laughs> Option that they go, a suitable girl. <laughs> All right, tell me the answer. It is option B, the golden gate. So the golden gate by Vikram Seth is based on the story of John Brown, who cannot get love in life, ends up much the same way as he begins, an abandoned human being. Okay, let's move on to question number 12. Who among the following said, we are all instinctively bilingual? Your options are A. Bhavani Bhattacharya, B. Mahesh Dattani, C. Mulk Raj Anand, or D. Raja Rao. Say who said we are all instinctively bilingual? It is option D, Raja Rao. Okay? Oh, wow. Chale, question number 13. Pe. Who is the author of the influential history of India called the Indian History Historiography of India? Okay? So the Indian Historiography of India was written by options are A, Ramachandra Guha. B. Ranajit Guha, C. Sarojini Naidu, or D. Shashi Tharoor. Tell me, who is it? 
It is option B, Ranajit Guha. He is the writer of the Indian historiography of India. Question number 14 on your screens. Which of the following is a detective fiction novel written by Anita Nair set in the city of Bangalore? A. Living next door to Alice. B. Good night and God bless. C. The lilac house. Or D. Cut like wound. Anita Nair's detective fiction novel set in Bangalore is option D. Cut like wound. Okay. Here it is. Let's move on to question number 15. Who criticized half-baked modern Indians as strangers to our own culture and camp followers of another culture feeding on leavings and garbage? Basically, who criticized half-baked modern Indians? Your options are A. Salman Rushdie, B. R. K. Narayan, C. Ahmed Ali, or D. Shashi Tharoor. Easy, hai. Eh? It is option B. R. K. Narayan. Okay? Question number 16. Who among the following wrote the play Agra Bazaar? A. Girish Karnad. B. Habib Tanvir. C. Badal Sarkar. Or D. Mahesh Dattani. It is option B. Habib Tanvir. So, Habib we wrote the play Agra Bazaar. Okay? Question number 17 on your screens. The official name of which of the following committee of 1920 was the Disorders Inquiry Committee and was constituted after the massacre at Jallianwala Bagh on 13th April 1919. Tell me the name of the committee which was constituted after the massacre at Jallianwala Bagh. A. Woods Dispatch. B. Wood and Abbott Report. C. Mudilayar Commission. Or D. Hunter Committee. Come on. What is the answer? It is option D. Hunter Committee. Okay. Constituted after the massacre at Jallianwala Bagh in 1919. Okay. Question number 18 on your screen. The autobiographical novel of Mulk Raj Anand universalizes the personal predicament of the author who tries to understand the meaning of life. Identify the title. A. Seven Ages of Man. B. The English Teacher. C. My Son's Father. Or D. The Dark Room. Just tell me the autobiographical novel of Mulk Raj Anand. He wants to understand the meaning of life in this. The answer is option A, seven ages of man. Okay, question number 19. Bye-bye Blackbird, which highlights the problem of the color in UK is written by A, Kushwan Singh, B, Anita Desai, C, Kiran Desai, or D, Jhumpa Lahiri. Come on, do you know this? Bye Bye Blackbird is written by? The answer is option B, Anita Desai. It actually talks of the problems of color in UK, brown color, right? Here it is. Bye Bye Blackbird by Anita Desai. Question number 20. Which famous Dalit writer articulated? I write because I want this voice. I want to be heard. I would not write if I did not have this burning rage to change the horrifyingly unequal society into which I was born. Okay, your options are A. Arun Kambli, B. Shantabai Kambli, C. Nam Dev Dhasal, or D. Meena Kandaswami. Say, it is option D. Meena Kandaswami, right? She said, I write because I want this voice. I write, you know, because I have this rage inside me. I want to change this unequal society into which I was born, right? Let's move on to question number 21. Silence, the court is in session by Vijay Tendulkar was originally written in which language? A, Tulu, B, Marathi, 
C. Bengali or D. Telugu? It is option B. Marathi. So silence. The court is in session. Is in Marathi by Vijay Tendulkar. Okay. Question number 22. Who is the narrator and the protagonist of the novel Nectar in, the, in a Sieve by Kamala Markande? Okay. So who is the narrator and the protagonist in Kamala Markande's novel Nectar in a Sieve? Your options are A. Jaya, B. Rukmani, C. Maya or D. Amu. The answer is option B. Rukmani. So just remember Rukmani is the protagonist of Nectar in a Sieve by Kamla Markande. Question number 23. Name this famous novel by Kushwan Singh which is set in Amritsar during the height of India's freedom movement. A. Train to Pakistan. B. I shall not hear the nightingale. C. The Sikhs. Or D. Women and Men in My Life. The novel by Kushwan Singh set in Amritsar during India's freedom movement is option B. I shall not hear the nightingale. Okay. This takes us to question number 24. Who among the following is Anita Desai's, sorry, which among the following is Anita Desai's debut novel? A. Clear Light Day. B. Fasting Feasting. C. In Custody. Or D. Cry the Peacock. You know it? Yes, you do. It is option D. Cry the Peacock. Anita Desai's debut novel. Question number 25. Who wrote the autobiographical novel, The Seven Ages of Man? A. R. K. Narayan. B. Mulk Raj Anand. C. Raja Rao. Or D. Vikram Seth. Come on. The answer is option B. Mulk Raj Anand. So Mulk Raj Anand's autobiographical novel is called The Seven Ages of Man. Okay. This takes us to question number 26. The poem, The Harp of India is written by option A, Toru Dutt, B, Henry, sorry, not Henry, B, Henry De Rosio, C, R. Parthasarthi, or D, A. K. Ramanujan. Come on. The Harp of India is written by option B, Henry De Rosio, okay? Henry De Rosio with the harp of India, connect. Question number 27, which among the following novels is not a part of Ibis Trilogy by Amitav Ghosh? A, Sea of Poppies, B, The Lowland, C, River of Smoke, or D, Flood of Fire? It's easy. It is option B, The Lowland. This is not a part of the Ibis Trilogy. Which are the three works of Ibis Trilogy? Sea of Poppies, River of Smoke, Flood of Fire by Amitav Ghosh, right? Question number 28. Who is the protagonist of the novel Such a Long Journey by Rohintan Mystery? Your options are A. Sakharam Binder, B. Salim Sinai, C. Gustav Noble or D. Balram Halwai. Do you know this? Who is the protagonist of Such a Long Journey by Rohinton Mystery? The answer is option C. Gustav Noble. Okay. Question number 28. Which among the following places is the setting of Kiran Desai's debut novel Hula Balu in the Guava Orchard? Your options are A. Dhaka. B. Shahakot, C. Zuluk, or D. Malana. Say, what is the setting of Hula Balu in the Guava Orchard? The answer is option B. Shahakot. Okay, or Shahakot. Question number 30. Who wrote introduction to Mulk Raj Anand's novel, The Untouchable? A. W. B. Yeats, B. E. M. Foster, C. T. S. Eliot. Or D. Graham Green. Who has written Introduction to the Untouchable by Mulk Raj Anand? 
The answer is option B, E. M. Foster. Okay. Question number 31. Which of these is not a part of R.K. Narayan's trilogy of novels? A. Swami and Friends. B. The Sword and the Sickle. C. The Bachelor of Arts. Or D. The English Teacher. It is option B. The Sword and the Sickle. Which is not a part of R.K. Narayan's trilogy of novels. So which novels form part of R.K. Narayan's trilogy? Swami and Friends. The Bachelor of Arts and the English Teacher. Okay. Question number 32. Which novel is considered to be a sequel to Raja Rao's The Serpent and the Rope and is subtitled A Tale of Modern India? A. The Cat and Shakespeare. B. Kantapura. C. Across the Black Waters. Or D. Waiting for Mahatma. The answer is option A, The Cat and Shakespeare. So remember it like this. The Cat and the Shakespeare is a sequel to The Serpent and the Rope. And The Cat and Shakespeare is subtitled as A Tale of Modern India. And it is written by Raja Rao. Okay. Question number 33. The title of the novel, Sunlight on a Broken Column, is taken from A, the Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, B. The Hollow Men, C. Macbeth, or D. Twelfth Night? The answer is option B. The Hollow Men. So, the title of the novel, Sunlight on a Broken Column, is taken from The Hollow Men. Okay? Question number 34. Nectar in a sieve, possession, a handful of rice, and two virgins are written by. Abhi abhi toh humne nectar in a sieve ki baat ki. So of course you know the answer, right? Should I read the options? No, you know the answer. It is option C. Kamla Markande. So Kamla Markande is the writer of nectar in a sieve, possession, a handful of rice, and two virgins, right? Let's move on to question number thirty-five. Which of the following novels by Anita Desai have not been shortlisted for the Booker Prize? A. Fire on the Mountain. B. Clear Light of Day. C. In Custody. Or D. Fasting Feasting. It is option A. Fire on the Sermon. So all the other works, that is Clear Light of Day, In Custody, Fasting Feasting, have been shortlisted for the Booker Prize. And all these novels are by Anita Desai. Okay. Question number 36. Roots and Shadows, Small Remedies and The Binding Wine are novels by A. Arundhati Roy, B. Shashi Deshpande, C. Sudha Murthy or D. Kamla Basin. The answer is option B. Shashi Deshpande. So Shashi Deshpande is the author of Roots and Shadows, Small Remedies and the Binding Wine. Okay, question number 37. For which novel was Arun Joshi awarded the Sahitya Academy Award in 1982? A. The Strange Case of Billy Biswas. B. Laburnum for My Head. C. The Last Labyrinth. Or D. India After Gandhi. Do you know it? Yes, you do. It is option C, The Last Labyrinth. So, for The Last Labyrinth, Arun Joshi got the Sahitya Academy Award in 1982. Question number 38. Which is the first novel by Amitav Ghosh? A, The Circle of Reason. B, The Hungry Tide. C, The Glass Palace. Or D, The Calcutta Chromosome. Tell me, it is option A, The Circle of Reason. So, The Circle of Reason is the first novel of Amitav Ghosh, right? Question number 39. Who among the following translated Kalidas's Abhigyan Shakuntalam? Okay, A, Ralph T. H. Griffith. B, Charles Wilkins. C, William Jones. 
or D, Nathaniel Bresse Halhead? Tell me, who translated Abhigyan Shakuntalam? The answer is option C, William Jones. Okay, that's the answer. Let's move on to question number 40. Here it is. Om Prakash Valmiki's autobiography, Juthan, has been translated into English by A. Arun P. Mukherjee, B. Girish Karnad, C. Shanta Gokhale, or D. Savitri Parmar. Do you know it? Yes, you do. It is option A. Arun P. Mukherjee. He translated Juthan into English. And Juthan is the autobiography of Om Prakash Valmiki. Okay? And the last question of the day, it says, who first translated Natya Shastra by Bharat Muni for the first time from the original Sanskrit to English with an introduction and various notes? The options are A. Nathaniel Halhead, B. Ralph T. H. Griffith, C. Manmohan Ghosh, or D. William Jones. Say, who translated Natya Shastra from original Sanskrit to English with an introduction? The answer is option C, Man Mohan Ghosh. Okay? Ho gaya Man Mohan Ghosh and we are done with Indian literature. We have done our best. You will also do your best tomorrow and the best will come to you. All the best from Team Test. We love you and do tell us how was your paper. Okay? All the very, very best. Abhi aapko dekke thode goosebumps mujhe bhi ho rahe hain. But then let's just relax. As I told you, go for a walk. Believe me, go for a walk. Listen to some calm music and believe in yourself and believe in universe. That whatever this universe will give you will be for your best. Right? Take care of yourself and drink lot of water. Bye-bye.